So the way to think about this entire event with all of these technologies coming together, including drones, is that GeoWeek is the intersection of geospatial and the built world. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun, and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 307. What do you get when you cross the built environment with geospatial technologies? For that question, we head to Portland, Maine, to speak with Jeremiah Karpowitz, Editorial Director, and Lee Corkhill, Group Events Director, both of Diversified Communications. Diversified Communications is a leading international media company with a portfolio of face-to-face exhibitions and conferences, online communities, and digital and print publications. The company connects, educates, and strengthens business communities in over 14 industries, including technology, food and beverage, healthcare, natural and organic, and business management. In February 2022, Diversified Communications will present GeoWeek, a new brand name of previously standalone events like AEC Technology Expo and Conference, the International LiDAR Mapping Forum, and SPAR 3D Expo and Conference. The move reflects the increased integration between the built environment, advanced airborne terrestrial technologies, and commercial 3D technologies. Drones will continue to support these segments and is sure to be featured during GeoWeek, illustrating the growth of the technology in advancing the work by geospatial professionals. In this edition of the Drone Radio Show, Lee and Jeremiah talk about GeoWeek, the geospatial industry, and how drones are gaining increased popularity in the geospatial world. But before we hear from Jeremiah and Lee, I want to thank those of you who are supporting my funding campaign. Whether it's a dollar, one hundred dollars, or much more, you can help defray the cost of production and keep the podcast going and growing. Go to droneradioshow.com slash donate. So let's find out how drones are supporting the rise of a geospatial ecosystem with Lee Corkill and Jeremiah Karpowitz of Diversified Communications. Let's pick up the interview where I ask Lee and Jeremiah to introduce themselves. My name is Jeremiah Karpowitz. I'm the editorial director for the technology group at Diversified, which includes working on content for commercial UAV Expo, as well as GeoWeek. And that's content that we see as part of our conference program, but also online in articles and in webinars. Um, So it kind of cuts across a lot of different places. I'm Lee Corkill. I was recently named the group event director for the tech group at Diversified. And I work on the same products that Jeremiah mentioned. Previously, I was the marketing director for 10 years on ILMF. GOE, FAR, and Commercial UAV Expo. Lee, tell us about Diversified Communications. So Diversified is a third-generation family-owned media company. It was established in 1949 by a former governor of Maine, Horace Hildreth. And our purpose is to connect, educate, and strengthen business communities. And we do that through our events, publications, and digital media. So we're headquartered in Portland, Maine, where we got about a foot of snow yesterday. And we've got offices in Canada, UK, Hong Kong, and Australia. Um, We serve about 15 different industries besides technology. And we've got 500 employees around the world. And we produce over 130 conferences, trade shows, print publications, virtual events, and host digital communities. Let's talk about GeoWeek. First of all, what is it? So GeoWeek is the coming together of three diversified events. Um, The first is AEC Next Technology Expo, which focuses on technologies for the built world. International LiDAR Mapping Forum, which focuses on advanced airborne and terrestrial technologies. 
and SPAR 3D Expo and Conference, which focuses on 3D technologies. So in addition, there are two co-located co events that will take place as part of GEO Week. One is ASPRS, the American Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing, their annual conference, and the U.S. Institute of Building Documentation's annual symposium. So is it basically what used to be four or five shows is now combined into one show? Yes, basically that's it. And um, what we're attempting to do here is create an event that really reflects the increasing integration of these technologies coming together. So the tagline that we've got really kind of sums it up is it's the intersection of geospatial and the built world. Why did Diversified feel that the time was right for this type of change? You know, it's been kind of a long time in the making. It was first broached after we had acquired International LiDAR Mapping Forum and SPAR 3D. There were some synergies between the events, but they were largely distinct. And at the time, it made sense to hold them separately. But we've increasingly seen this confluence of the technologies between those events and AEC Next and had this sort of long-term vision that they could come together. And this was really fast-tracked by what happened in 2020 with the pandemic and postponing and rescheduling and ultimately having to cancel events. So the timing, you know, was a little quicker than we thought, but it does feel right. And the news has been really well received by the industry. And I think these connections between the events were always there. They were always underlying, but we might not have enabled them in as direct of a way as we can now, which is creating opportunities for us and for our attendees and exhibitors, which is really exciting. How do drones fit into the show? Drones have been a part of all three events previously, and I mean, the Commercial UAV Expo itself has its origins in SPAR 3D. That was, that was something Lisa Murray had identified in terms of this drone technology coming on in a big way at, at SPAR 3D, and it made sense to explore and, and launch an event that was completely dedicated to it. So the connection with drones have always been there, but I mean, for the geospatial industry itself, like, I mean, drones have been part of that and the progress there has been as powerful and maybe not as as quick as as we might have, have liked in some instances, because I think for a few years there, there was, there was just some hesitation about whether, you know, there's a lot of hype associated with this technology. Are the results actually there? Is it really going to make a difference? But, you know, I've, I've connected with experts experts throughout the space where they kind of qualify in terms of accuracy, in terms of cost, in terms of time, the difference that drones can make for these kind of geospatial projects. And it's it's real and it's powerful. Can you share with us how drone use has grown across the various segments? So the growth across all of the segments that GeoWeek covers in terms of how drones are being applied is something that we can see in a lot of ways because it's changing in terms of it's not about drones creating this brand new opportunity, but about being a tool in the toolkit. And that's something that professionals in all of those industries are able to understand and dig in in a way that they might not have been able to in the past because of how the technology is changing and maturing. And in doing that, you know, it also does open up some new opportunities, but it's about being able to do something cheaper, faster and safer. And there's a better understanding of what that can look like for specific stakeholders and for specific organizations and for specific workflows. And in doing so, that's creating different opportunities for them in terms of how they can approach a given task or, or work. And similar to I mean, something that, that I know you've talked with a lot of your guests about is that it's not about a drone coming in and being this end-all, be-all geospatial solution, but about being another tool in the toolkit. And the event is really about showcasing the number of different ways that people are defining what that tool can and should look like for them and for their workflows and processes. Do you have any examples of how geospatial data is being captured by drones today? 
there's all kinds of examples from previous years. You know, I wrote about uh, the impact of drones for geospatial professionals on beach renourishment uh, survey projects. And again, that was something where they really kind of kind of looked at how the technology was able to make a difference in terms of accuracy, in terms of cost, and in terms of time. UAVs were, were able to, to be within four centimeters on, on some of the control points that were established with the projects. The cost for the UAV was 30% less expensive than something else they a different alternative that they might have been using in the past and just in terms of time they were able to complete that project in something that could have been taken a few days is down to a day or a day and a half so those are distinctions that they calculated and quantified are today's geospatial professionals also drone pilots or are they just consumers of the data collected by drones for the most part, it's it's those geospatial professionals who are now drone pilots or have added that to their repertoire. Some of that goes back to the, the surveys that Colin Snow and now David Benowitz does as as the drone analyst. You know, years ago, Colin had identified that the photo video segment was the number one segment, but it wasn't the largest segment in terms of how people and firms were actually making money of the top 10 most prevalent services that were making over 100K in revenue, it was the surveying and mapping and GIS services that were very much at the top and even connected with David to make to make sure that that was still accurate in their 2020 survey. And, and he confirmed that it was. Geo Week will be held in Denver from February 6th through the 8th, 2022. It'll be a live event. I know it's early, but what can you tell us about how the show will be organized? The organization of the conference content is going to be based on kind of the origins of the event itself, going back to that, the SPAR 3D piece, the ILMF piece, and the AEC Next piece. So we're going to have, have different tracks that if you if you look to see those connections with kind of what, our, what was the previous conference program for each of those events, you can see it. But at the same time, we want to get attendees thinking more in terms holistically as all of this being part of one larger tent so that even if you you were there for the for the spar pieces there's going to be something from from ILF ILMF that makes sense for you and even if you're there as somebody who is focused on the AEC tracks there's going to be some pieces of spar and ILMF that that really makes sense for you which again goes back to that intersection of the geospatial and built world how will drones be reflected in the content of the show we're going to have specific tracks that are focused on use cases that have integrated drones or utilized drones in one way or another. Off the top of my head, there's some land land and natural resource management sessions that are going to dig in and explore some of those efficiencies that I, that I was previously talking about in terms of the accuracy and cost and time, because ultimately that's what our attendees are most are really looking for when they come to one of our events is to really understand how and where these pieces of technology have made a difference. And because it comes down to that ROI. A drone, obviously, the the cost can be anywhere from $1,000 to $100,000. But even if it is at that low end, these users want to know what kind of a difference it's it's made to people that have actually done these jobs. So that's that's something we want to showcase in a lot of different elements, which you'll be able to see across the conference content program. For exhibitors, what would you expect to see in the way of drones and technology at the show? I know there's going to be exhibitors that are going to have their drone hardware uh, on display. I'm sure there'll be some that'll make it more of a, of a centerpiece and more prominent than others. But with the drone technology being an element of all three events previously, it's going to continue to be something that exhibitors highlight because our attendees want to see what's new and what's different and what's next from any company that is either making a piece of drone hardware or even drone software. Will there be any additional offerings outside of Geo Week? Yeah, so ASPRS is hosting their annual conference, and that focuses on LIDAR, photogrammetry, and GIS. And USIBD, their content will focus on building documentation projects, improved workflows, applications that lead to improved ROI. So anyone who attends can get a GeoWeek pass and or add on one of these other two symposiums to their conference pass. How would you describe the nuances between GeoWeek and the Commercial UAV Expo? 
at commercial UAV, you're going to get more of the of the regulatory piece and the FAA piece. And then you're going to see it at GeoWeek. But with GeoWeek, there's more of a, of a holistic sense of how this technology is being applied and utilized in specific industries that people who are familiar with with Commercial UAV Expo will also see here, including infrastructure and transport, surveying and mapping, mining and aggregates, things like that. You know, that, that stuff is very much part of it, but it goes beyond that as well because we're gonna have elements of where and how drones are making a difference in industries like urban planning for smart cities. Uh, there's a bit more with assets and facility management that we'll be able to detail and showcase with drones. So it, it's a bit wider in terms of the scope that you'll see with, with some of that for drones at GeoWeek. Is it a stretch if I say that at the Commercial UAV Expo, the drone is the star, and at GeoWeek, the drone is a supporting actor? I think that'd be pretty accurate. Well, especially with the drone being the star at Commercial UAV Expo, then it's, that's the, the name on the marquee. So we're keeping that as centrally focused. But you know, at, at GeoWeek, drones are, are there and they have a presence, but it's more about kind of how they're part of these bigger ecosystems and how different professionals should be considering what they mean as part of that that ecosystem. And and that's not something that isn't discussed and laid out in at Commercial UAV Expo. It's just kind of a different discussion and different context about what that can look like. What other kinds of tools will be featured at GeoWeek other than drones? So in terms of the the other t- technologies that are going to be available and on display at, at GeoWeek, we're talking about the newest LiDAR mapping technologies. You're going to see the latest innovations and in applications of BIM. We're going to have tools that are there to optimize uh, working with data, industrial applications of 3D technology, both on the hardware and software side. There's going to be tools and technology that are focused on artificial intelligence and machine learning applications, along with advanced sensors. You know, the drones are obviously in there and and directly and indirectly part of of some of that. But there's going to be a lot there in terms of tools that are designed to create efficiencies in a lot of different ways. Now, this is a live event, and it's been a long time since people have actually gone to a live event. So how excited are you, the sponsors, and the attendees about the prospect of attending a live event? The team is super excited about it, as are our exhibitors and attendees, advisory board. I think people are waiting until they can get back to live events because, you know, while we have so many things that we can offer digitally, having that in-person connection is so critical. And from what we're hearing, people are really, really missing that. So we're scheduled with GeoWeek for February of 2022, but we've got two slated for GeoWeek. So one is Commercial UAV Expo in September in Las Vegas and Commercial UAV Expo Europe in December in Amsterdam. Can you tell us about what's being planned for the Commercial UAV Expo in America? Yes, we're right now in the planning stages for that. We're um, getting our advisory board together and we'll be meeting with them soon to um, review the content, start developing the content topics and speakers. We're working on partnerships and all of these parts of the event that take place this far out, we're right in the middle of. How do you see drones evolving in the geospatial industries? The exciting thing about how drones already are and will be used in in the geospatial industry relates to opportunities that are going to be be opened up that we don't know what we don't know about how that's going to change things like Jack Dangerman I saw just had a TED talk where he talked about geospatial is going to be the the nervous system that could help us design a better future I put together an article about how geospatial data is going to enable a, a fourth industrial revolution that's going to do everything from allow you to get an update on your smartphone when you walk by a restaurant that gives you 10 bucks off because that's information that is accessible and available I mean, obviously, there's technology and even ethical and privacy implications to all of that. But those are all discussions that we can have that are based on what's possible with the technology. And what's possible with the technology is going to come out of events like GeoWeek, because that's where we, we can have a, a foundation and an exploration of what how drones are part of that. Jeremiah, can you talk more about the fourth industrial revolution and how drones will fit into that? 
the fourth industrial revolution piece is really a continuation of the first industrial revolution that took place in the 1700s. But you know, rather than, than steam getting us through that and defining that, it's going to be data that's going to be defining this fourth industrial revolution. Data is central to it in a way that's tough to describe just because it, it creates so many options and opportunities. And those are options and opportunities that are based on things that we know how to do and approach right now, but then also enables other approaches and opportunities that we can't even envision. Like we're thinking about data in terms of what that means to an established workflow and that and this new and better geospatial data is gonna open up opportunities with what exists, but it's also gonna redefine how that can be accessed and approached. And exactly what that means is gonna be different for everybody in terms of what they're trying to do, in terms of what sector they're in, in terms of what their responsibilities are. But that's an entire revolution in and of itself that's really exciting to envision and be a part of. And of course, autonomy is gaining a lot of traction these days. What's your perspective? The capabilities around autonomy are changing expectations around what we can expect from our technology. And they're just redefining things in, in such a powerful way that, again, it's tough to even describe it because it just changes the paradigm around what a given tool can do or how that changes somebody's responsibility instead of somebody needing to go out to a pile and walk around it to inspect it to get a measurement from it and they can press that button and make that happen and all of a sudden they've got something that's even more accurate than it had been before and they've got four hours that they can devote to a whole different set of tasks that you can see in the bottom line and beyond but there are challenges the advancements with the technology, I mean, it's tough to keep up. It's tough to keep up and regulators have a tough time keeping up as well. That's something you know, the FAA takes a lot of criticism in terms of not moving fast enough because this, this technology is just changing so quickly and it is creating these options that people want to take advantage of. And it's just so fast that, that people, by the time you're, you're up and running with something, there, there might be something new. <laughs> For both of you, what excites you about the future of drones? For me, establishing UTM is key to so much. So really that continued progression to safely integrating drones into the airspace is super exciting and you know will open the doors going forward. Would geospatial professionals be involved with UTM at any level? Like if you're talking about survey professionals, like they're not really involved with that piece. But if you talk about this bigger geospatial nervous system, like I was referencing that Jack Dangerman had talked about, like there is that connection there. If we talk about geospatial as an entire segment or industry, like that's where that is. The concept that you just articulated, the geospatial ecosystem, does that exist now? You know, that geospatial nervous system ecosystem is kind of a, a future vision for what it means to define how we integrate with the world around us. That's something that I think we have a better sense of now that we all have these smartphones that can, can give us a specific location on the earth anywhere we go, and we can look up exactly how far something is from something else. So, I mean, all of that is is geospatial information that 10 years ago wasn't possible, and it already has changed things, and that's going to continue to develop. Going back to an earlier question, Jeremiah, what excites you about drones? What excites me about the future is the possibilities and the options that I'm not even thinking about. That, you know, one of the questions I always have when I interview folks is whether a drone allows you to do something that you're already doing in a more efficient way, or does it allow you to do something completely new and different? And, and typically the answer is both, but people get there in different ways because they purchase a drone because they do have a specific idea about what it's going to do for them or what it's going to do for their workflow in terms of how they can now use it to do something faster or, or cheaper. And, and that's great because that's creating efficiency right then and there. But then once they have their hands on it and they have a sense of what it can actually do, all of a sudden they start thinking about, oh, what if we try this? Or maybe we can use this tool to do that. And they experiment and they create all new efficiencies that they hadn't even accounted on. And that and that really excites me is that these these possibilities that are being enabled and created in all kinds of different ways. Have you encountered any resistance from attendees or sponsors that really liked having separate conferences? So far, we've gotten really positive feedback and 
some people have said the industries have been really siloed, but there's a lot of overlap in the technology and processes and knowledge. And so that by bringing them together, there's an opportunity for professionals from various industries and various disciplines to learn from each other and share the tools and processes that each industry does really well. So our hope with the event is that the event will facilitate better collaboration, better efficiency, better outcomes. So there's that response. And for anyone who is, you know, kind of squarely in their initial feeder event, we will have ample content and technology that speaks to those segments. And just to pick up on that, our team had thought we were going to look at some feedback in terms of people saying, oh, I don't, uh, I don't like this. Like, I don't, I don't like everything coming together, but I don't recall seeing anything that, that was even along those lines. I think a lot of people do see these synergies and they're really happy and excited to see them enabled and cultivated in what's going to be an active way uh, because it makes sense for them, both in terms of something that they want to do as part of the audience that they're appealing to, but then also as this one all-encompassing event that allows them to to serve a lot of different needs in a single way in place. For nearly a year, we've all been doing virtual meetings and we've all gotten very comfortable and good at doing virtual meetings. Are there any thoughts on integrating virtual technology into the live conference format? Yeah, so that's definitely something that we are looking at as You may know we had a a virtual event for commercial UAV Expo back in September. So ideally what we would do is have some sort of streaming or recorded content in addition to live conference programming. You know, we're looking into that and what that means and how we can best do it and give our audience rich content in person and maybe from elsewhere, from home or the office. So what's the next live event that we can look forward to? Our next live event is Commercial UAV Expo Americas. It's taking place September 7th to the 9th at the Mirage in Las Vegas. And for my final question, Jeremiah and Lee, what message would you like to leave regarding the role that drones will play in the future? For anyone who works in the commercial drone industry and who understands the capabilities of drones. They know what amazing tools they are and how they can improve efficiency and safety and save time and money across so many industries. With the pandemic, I think and I hope that we'll see a more public appreciation and acceptance of drones for things like package delivery and medical delivery. And I hope that that will in turn positively impact the overall drone industry And I think that may leave a a lasting positive legacy. Drones have been talked about as as being just another tool in the toolkit for years now. But I, I think we're finally getting to a place where professionals in different industries are understanding what that can and should mean for them. And, and I think that's really exciting because, you know, for a bit, there was that concern about somebody's job away or a drone's going to gonna completely change this established workflow or paradigm. And that's really not the way to be thinking about the technology. It's about augmenting something you're you're already doing or about creating a more efficient way to, to do it or about opening up a, a brand new opportunity. And that's something that GeoWeek is going to highlight in a few different ways across various segments. And it's really exciting to be part of the conversation that's going to break down how these tools are going to be in everybody's toolkit in a different way. And it is going to be different for, for everybody because there's no easy drone button. I think that's what that's what everybody is out there looking for and in a lot of cases asking for, but it's not there. You've got to dig in and figure out how are these tools going to create efficiencies. That's it for episode 307 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Jeremiah Karpowitz and Lee Corkill of Diversified Communications and learning about GeoWeek 2022. I want to thank Jeremiah and Lee for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about GeoWeek or want to connect with Jeremiah or Lee, check out the website at geo-week.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, please consider supporting the podcast with a small donation. 
The content is always free, but for as little as $1, you can help defray the cost of production. To donate, go to DroneRadioShow.com slash donate. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me, and I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Gores. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels.